Welcome to third lectures on terpenes and terpenoids. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the chemistry of geraniol. First of all, we will see the occurrence as well as uses of geraniol. We will discuss the structure determinations as well as synthesis of geraniol in very detail. Geraniol is a trans isomer and nerol is a cis isomerism. Cis isomer. So we will discuss the cis trans isomerism between these two molecules. Geraniol is a typical allylic alcohol containing two double bond and therefore its oxidation reactions are very interesting. We will discuss few oxidation reactions of geraniol. At the end, we will discuss the 1H as well as C13 NMR data of geraniol. First of all, let us see from where geraniol we get. The major source of the geraniol is rose. Another sources are palm rose oil as well as citronyl oil. So when we extract geraniol from these sources, generally it appears like yellow liquid, but uh, the pure form of the geraniol is a colorless liquid. Geraniol is having a very pleasant smell of uh, rose and therefore it is used in perfume industry. It is used in the manufactures of lotions, creams, detergents, shave lotions, soaps, as well as various bathing products. Geraniol is also having some medicinal properties. It shows it is an anti antibacterial, it is antiseptic, and it can also act as an anti-inflammatory product. Now let us discuss the structure of geraniol molecule on the basis of chemical methods of analysis. In the earlier days, chemists were not having sophisticated uh, physical methods available and therefore they were relying on the chemical methods of analysis. In this chemical methods of analysis, the first step is the isolation of geraniol in very pure form from rose oil. After the isolation, it is subjected to various chemical reactions. From these chemical reactions, we have to reach to the structures of the geraniol molecule. In this investigation, the first step is the estimation of carbon and hydrogens. From estimations of carbon and hydrogen, chemists were reaching to the empirical formula of geraniol. And from empirical formula of the geraniol, they were getting the molecular formula of the geraniol. And it was found to be C10H18O. The molecular formula of the geraniol is a very useful information in structure of geraniol molecule. Here it contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. It means geraniol is a terpenoid molecule. It contains 10 number of carbon atoms. It means that there are two isoprene units. And because of this presence of two isoprenate, it belongs to a class of monoterpenite. Again, according to the special isoprene rule, we can assume that these two isoprene units may be joined through head to tail linkage. So just by say 10 number of carbon atoms, we get a rough idea about the structure of geraniol molecule. Another useful information we get about the structure of geraniol molecule from molecular formula is the degree of unsaturation or double bond equivalence. Now for, now for a molecule CxH5OZ, the double bond equivalence is calculated by formula x plus 1 minus y by 2. So if we keep the values of uh, 10 and 18 here, we get the degree of unsaturation is equal to 2. Now what is the meaning of this degree of unsaturation is equal to 2? It means that geraniol may contain the two double bond, it may contain the two, room, two rings, or it may be the combinations of one double bond as well as one ring. So in the incoming, so in, in the subsequent investigations, we have to find out the nature of these unsaturations. Therefore, the next experiment is the hydrogenation experiment to find out these unsaturations. When geraniol is subjected to hydrogenations, it forms C10H22O. It is called as tetrahydrogeraniol. So chemists were isolating this compound in pure form. They were again subjecting to the element analysis and they were finding the molecular formula as C10H22O. Now after this experiment, if you do some chemical arithmetic, if you subtract the molecular formula of geraniol from the molecular formula of the hydrogenation product here, we get that we see that the two molecules of hydrogens are consumed by geraniol. And since it has consumed two molecules of hydrogen, we say that we, we assume that geraniol molecule contains two double bonds. Similar experiment is a bromination. Here two molecules of bromine are consumed by geraniol. So on the basis of hydrogenation experiment as well as bromination experiment, we conclude that geraniol molecule contained two, more, two double bonds. So out of this two unsaturation, this two double bond, uh, this two unsaturation is corresponding to two double bonds here. Now let us switch out to the analysis of oxygen. What is the nature of this oxygen? And for this, a very simple experiment was performed. Geraniol was subjected to oxidation and the product form is C10H16O. 
This C10H16O was found to be an aldehyde, and aldehyde formation indicates that the starting material, that's a geranol, must be an alcohol. The more investigations about this oxidation product revealed that it is a citral molecule. And citral structure we have already discussed in lecture number two. So on the basis of very simple on the basis of very simple oxidation experiment, we reach to the structure of geranol molecule. Citral is a alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, and therefore geranol molecule must be an unsaturated must be an allylic alcohol. So we reach quickly to the structure of geranol only because of the oxidation experiment. So in this way, just by elemental analysis, hydrogenation, bromination, and oxidation experiment, we reach to the structure of geranol molecule. Similarly, we have seen in lecture number two that citral on reductions gives geranol. So again, we get back geranol. So this is a very short kind of investigations about the structure of geranol because we have already know about the structure of citral. Now, after structure determination, let us see how this geranol is synthesized in the lab. There are various methods. Some of them are very interesting. Citral on reductions with sodium amalgam gives geranol and some small quantity of neural is also obtained. So in the incoming slides, we'll talk more about this geranol as well as neural. At that time, we'll write the structure here. So this is one method of obtaining the geranol. Simple reductions of citral gives us geranol. Another method is, another method of synthesis of geranol starts from linalool molecule. Linalool is a monoterpenoid. It's an allylic tertiary alcohol. Under acidic condition, it undergoes allylic rearrangement and we get a geranol molecule. Here, the carbocation chemistry is involved here and similar kind of carbocation chemistry will involve, will require in understanding the biosynthesis of this terpenoid molecule. This is a laboratory synthesis of geranol from linalool. The third synthesis is involving co-rearrangement, 3-3 co-rearrangement. This is a diene here, isolated diene here. And this isolated diene undergo 3-3 co-rearrangement, 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement and we get a geranol molecule. Another synthesis of geranol uh, involves ethyl acetoacetate chemistry, methyl magnesium bromide and allyl bromide. It's a very interesting synthesis. We have to assemble total 10 number of carbon atoms. Five number of carbon atoms are coming from allyl bromide here. Four number of carbon atoms are coming from ethyl acetoacetate. One is coming from methyl magnesium bromide. So the synthesis starts from here, reactions of ethyl acetoacetate with LDA, lithium diisopropylamide. It generates enolate anion. So this enolate anion is alkylated using this allyl bromide and we get here vinyl allyl type of the ether. Vinyl allyl type of the ether is a glycine substrate. When it undergo, when it is heated, it undergo 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement and we get a rearranged product. So in this way, we get an alkylation product here, but it's a rearranged product here. To some extent, rearrangement is realized here. Now, in this substrate, we do not require this OET moiety. We require this ester. We have to transform this ester into corresponding alcohol and for that we have to perform its reduction. So, if you try to reduce it, this carbonyl group will interfere and therefore the protections of this carbonyl group is achieved with ethylene glycol. We get a cyclic ketal. And now it's a ether. Ether is inert for lithium aluminum hydride reductions. So, we get a reduction of ester group to alcohol and then under acidic conditions, then this OH group is protected here in the form of acetate. And then this cyclic ketal is deprotected under mild acidic conditions, we get a ketone. So in this way, we reach to the nine number of carbon atoms. Our requirement is 10 number of carbon atoms for geraniol. This is a five number and this is the four number of carbon atoms. One, two, three and four this is coming from ethyl acetate. So we are very close to the target molecule now and for that, we have to utilize Grignard reaction here. Its reactions with the methyl magnesium bromide gives us 10 number of carbon atom. It's a tertiary al alcohol. And tertiary alcohol undergo dehydration reactions using acetic anhydride. And we get here again diene. This diene is, looks like a cope substrate. So when it is heated, it undergo 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement. And we get this alkene. We get this product. And this on hydrolysis, Deprotection occurs here and we get OH here. So this molecule is a geranial molecule and we can rewrite it in this format. So in this way, we reach to the structure of, we reach to the synthesis of geranial molecule using allyl bromide 
provide in five number of carbon atoms ethyl acid acid provide four number of carbon atoms and methyl magnesium bromide provides one number of carbon atom various concepts are involved here this enolate chemistry is involved sigma tropic reactions are involved protection and deprotection strategy is involved here is also the protection and deprotection to some extent it is protected as alcohol is protected and later on the alcohol is deprotected here so this synthesis is very interesting as far as the concepts are concerned now let us see the cis trans isomerism between the geraniol as well as a nerol molecule we have seen that when citral molecule is reduced it gives a geraniol and apart from geraniol we also get a small quantity of another molecule that's a nerol molecule now this geraniol and nerol molecule is having the same molecular formula they are having a same connectivity but these two structures are different only because of the double bond here this double bond is to some extent a trans and this is a cis here so this geraniol is a trans isomer and nerol is a cis isomer and in the earlier days these two were differentiated on the basis of chemical methods again it is found that geraniol on reactions with s2so4 forms alpha terpenol nerol also reacts with s2so4 it also forms an alpha terpenol but nerol as a cis form it reacts nine times faster than that of the geraniol and obviously the rate is obvious because this allylic alcohol is in very close proximity with this trisubstrate double bond whereas this allylic carbon atom is far away from this trisubstrate double bond so we will see the mechanism of this reactions and from this mechanism of reactions again we will understand why the rates of nerol is nine times faster than that of the geraniol so this is a star carbon atom it is very close to it this is again the star carbon atom here we are interested in this cyclization it is far away so in the mechanism first of all geraniol as well as nerol both of them are protonated protonated oh is a very good leaving group we get a carbocation and this carbocation is trapped by this trisubstrate double bond and we get a cyclization here now this cyclization process is very slow because these are away from each other whereas this is very close and therefore it's a fast and we get a tertiary carbocation tertiary carbocation is trapped by water molecule and subsequently we get the alpha terpenol so in this way we have seen that geraniol and nerol this show these are the geometric isomers and nerol undergo cyclization nine times faster than that of the geraniol now let us take another transformations of nerol nerol is an isomer of geraniol nerol on acidic conditions form alpha terpenol we have already seen and apart from this alpha terpenol it also forms small quantities of limonene as well as alpha pinene it's a laboratory synthesis it's a laboratory reactions and this similar kind of the reactions are done by the nature but instead of oxygen there is a pyrophosphate and we will come across the biosynthesis of alpha terpenol limonene and alpha pinene so the mechanism of this reaction is very much analogous to the biosynthesis of all these molecules so here we will see how these two are formed we have already seen how alpha terpenol is formed from nerol nerol is protonated we get a carbocation carbocation is trapped we get a tertiary carbocation and it is reacts with a nucleophile we get alpha terpenol now this carbocation tertiary carbocation is having various options the first option is that it can remove the proton from this carbon atom and it remo removes the proton we get the limonene molecule and limonene is source of uh, limonene is present in sweet lemon alternatively this carbocation can be trapped by internal nucleophile like a double bond and we get a bicyclic structure and here removal of proton can occur and we will get a alpha pinene similarly from this intermediate we can get a beta pinene here but it is not shown in this slide so this mechanism uh, of conversion of nerol to alpha terpenol limonene and alpha pinene will be useful in understanding the biosynthesis of the terpenates and therefore it is necessary that one must learn it uh, learn it very well now this geraniol is a allylic alcohol containing a two double bond and it undergo very interesting oxidation reactions the first one is a specific allylic oxidation for allylic oxidation mno2 is a preferred reagent here allylic alcohol undergo oxidations we get alpha beta unsaturated that's a citral molecule we get similarly the carbon carbon bond cleavage that's a degree oxidative degradation of geraniol can be accomplished using transition metal like kmno4 or it can be achieved by ozonolysis now depending upon the workup in ozonolysis if you do the reductive workup with uh, dimethyl sulfide then glyoxal is formed but if you do the same thing in kmno4 then 
oxalic acid is one of the product form because of this isopropylidene group we get acetone in both the cases here is a levylic acid is formed here is a level aldehyde another reaction is a sharpless asymmetric epoxidation of uh, allylic alcohol that's a geraniol here we get again two enantiomers and one is major over the another because of the presence of plus dithyl tartarate now the last slide is related to the nmr data of geraniol molecule if you record the nmr of geraniol we get how many signals 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 nine signals are likely to occur but here 1 2 3 4 5 6 is opted because these two are getting overlapped here now these two methyl groups in fact they are different but they are appearing under the same environment almost close environment they are not separable and here Uh, they are appearing at 1.67. Therefore, the number of peaks appears to be less in this case. We are having olefinic protons here, and here is also the olefinic proton. Uh, it is around 5.40. It's a more deshielded than this olefinic proton because of the oxygen inductive effect. 4.13. Is this a very distinct? Uh, we'll get a doublet here. This is uh, this uh, 1.60. This is again appearing as a singlet. and these two carbon atoms will appear as a multiplet this is olefinic protons similarly in the c13 nmr we will have ch2 attached to the oh 59.2 then uh, this two olefinic carbon atoms and this two olefinic carbon atom 139 131 124 1 23 this is a olefinic region 59 is a carbon atom connected to the oh and remaining are uh, remaining are this ch2 ch2 and this two oh Oh, methyl groups as well as methylene groups will be here. So it's a very interesting NMR of uh, geraniol molecule. So in this way, we have reached to the uh, we have discussed the chemistry of geraniol. We have discussed the NMR. We have discussed oxidation reactions. We have seen the conversions of nerol into various uh, uh, terpenoid molecules. Then the how nerol reacts nine times faster than that of the geraniol. And we have seen the interesting synthesis of geraniol, and we have also studied the structure determination of citral. So in this way, we have learned the geraniol chemistry. Now it's time to think of the examinations. What are the probable? What are the variety? What are the variety of the problems likely to be asked in the examination? Uh, one can ask, predict the products of following reactions. Students will be uh, asked to write the products of reactions of geraniol with bromine, hydrogen. Uh, then CrO3 oxidation, acetic anhydride, and dilute sugar. So we have seen it consumes two molecules of bromine, two molecules of hydrogen. It gives a citral monoacetate is formed, and here it forms a alpha terpenol. So this is a very again interesting revision kind of the exercise. The next problem is on uh, we have to justify it why this happens, and we have to show the structure of nerol. Nerol is a cis isomer, and therefore it undergoes. Nine times faster. It's a carbocation chemistry is involved, so one must uh, write the mechanism of these reactions very well. And the last slide is about the mechanism of these reactions. Geraniol transformation into alpha terpenol. Nerol is converted into alpha terpenol. Linalool is converted into geraniol. So these mechanisms uh, students should practice because uh, it will be useful in understanding the biosynthesis of terpenes. So this is all about the geraniol chemistry. and in this way we have completed uh, two molecules now in the fourth lecture we will discuss about the menthol so thank you very much for watching the video